All right, here we go, guys. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stick my little tiny propane torch in there, light it, I'm gonna turn the gas on, set the fire. All right, it's probably too loud for you to hear anything, so I'm gonna walk up there. I'm gonna turn the heat up. What I'm trying to do, I'm trying to do is get this piece right here hot. This is just a big piece of metal. I'm gonna get it hot, and I'm gonna drop it in my oil to heat my oil up temperature. Now, I don't have a thermometer in there. I stick my finger in it until it's hot, but not too hot if I stick my finger in it. So I'm going to heat this up and you'll see. Probably should stitch a couple videos together. I don't know. This is going to be like an eight hour video. I'm just gonna pause it, and when it gets up to temperature, we're gonna start it back over. So I uh, hang out. All right, guys, we're up to heat now. All I'm looking for is that little rod to get yellow, and that plug of steel to get red. So I'm just gonna stick it in this hot oil over here to heat my oil up. That's all I'm doing. All right, so here we go. What is going on? All right, see, it's red. I usually pour it in the dark, but for people I'm not. started the video so that I could show you something. I got the lights turned out. There's lights on in the other end of the shop just enough to give us room not to trip and fall over something. But when you're looking in your forge right now, that metal looks, it looks metal colored. You can't tell on the video what it does. So it's really hard to gauge your temperature of your steel inside the forge. What we're looking for at first is around 1600 degrees, which is, you know, kind of between a dark orange and a salmon color. So I'm gonna pull it out and show you. It looks fine, you know, looks cold outside of the porch. Pull it out in the dark. Look at that. See, there's your color you're looking for. And you can see here, I'm using my little pointer. You see these dark spots in there. That's where your carbon is really starting to swirl around. Now, that was the temperature I needed it to be. So I want to cool this in cool, dark air. All right? So look at this. Still magnetic. I'm gonna put it back in just for video purposes, and then we're gonna go back over um, what when you want to pull out the forge. I'm just not gonna do oil off it. Um, so I'm gonna pause it back again, and we're gonna go back to where we started. I just want to show you. Do you need to check the color of that steel outside of the forge? All right. Here we go. All right, so our blade's up to the right temperature for the first step of the normalization process. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. You're gonna see me test it against the magnet. I've got a welding magnet stuck right here next to it so I can see if I'm at critical temperature. Critical, non-magnetic, that, that's when you know your carbon and your steel is starting to move around, you're getting a good solution, all right? So I'm gonna pull it out, I'm gonna check it. Look at the color, it's beautiful. All right, look, that doesn't take that magnet anymore. I'm gonna 
I'm gonna lay it right there on that anvil, okay? Let me, let me just move you around just a little bit so you can see that, okay? So there that is. And you can see the color of that steel starting to change and there's like this black line that's going right, right through there in the descalescence line. And in person, it, it looks kind of swirly, like all the metals are swirling around there. That's, that's your carbon and all your different pieces of your metal moving around in there, getting harder. So there's going to be some guys that are probably going to say some nasty stuff about, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, you're using the wrong words. But look, basically I'm showing you what it looks like when you know you've got it to the right temperature and you're above critical. I'm going to flip the lights on so you can see something else too, because this looks bright red without the lights. Look at that. Black as night. You need to do this in the dark if you can, or stick it in the shadow. You can see some of those goons on forge and fire sticking in the shadow. Look at that. Still red. You want that to cool to black in cold, still air. I forge inside, but I've got ridge vents on my shop to keep me from sucking too much carbon, carbon monoxide. Da. Sounds like I've been sucking it anyway. Well, I'm gonna pause the video. We're gonna we're gonna pick it back up after we do our next uh, normalization step. All right, we'll pick it back up where we left off. Look, that blade is black. I'm over here. It's black, black. All right, look. It's, it's going to be magnetic again, so I'm going to turn this camera up just a little bit so you can see back to the forge area. All right, that, that, that should get it. That way we'll get everything in there. All right, there's a magnet over here. Now, you won't be able to tell up here, but you hear that? It sticks to it again. So it doesn't stay non-magnetic. I know that might be confusing. It does not stay non-magnetic when you get it different. It's going to go up past critical and then back down a little critical again. So you're going to put it back in there. And like I said, all we're doing is we're just trying to line up and get the grain structure real fine in that steel in case we put stress in it, in case something happened when Aldo was making it, whatever. So that's going to be step two. You know, we're going to bring it around uh, 1400 degrees. 1600 degrees the first step of normalization, 14 for the second step. I go around 13 for the third step. People may disagree with that. My blades get really, really hard. It's working for me. I'm sure some smart ass has got something to say about it, but it's working for me, and I've really tortured tested some blades. We'll torture test some together another time. Anyway, actually, this thing looks like it's already uh, close to the temperature I'm looking for here. Yeah, see, that's lower temperature. Look, it's not magnetic. It's just a little bit, it's still a little bit magnetic, but that's what we need get this thing where our grain structure is nice and fine, get a real hard knife and look at it. I'm gonna lay it here, let it cool black again. I ran my mouth long enough to where it got hot. So we're gonna pause it. Alright, look, we're, we're cool back down to black. That only took like a couple minutes. I'm gonna try to <laughs> pull this thing off of here and run better hit my ass. Alright, look, black, black again, I'm popping right back in the forge. 13, 13, 15. I'm doing this by eye. I first downloaded the chart off the internet that, that showed the colors of steel when they were at their different temperatures. You know, you can get a pyrometer, which I want to do, or I know I'm exactly dead ass at where I need to be. But, you know, I don't have a pyrometer. I'm a pyro maniac. So, right now, that was stupid. I don't even know why I said that because I'm not. Don't burn stuff. That's it. Oh, maybe you think I was cool if I did. We're heating this guy back up. Third normalization cycle. It's going to be very, really good for the steel. Now, it's not going to be non magnetic when we pull it out this time. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, it's probably get close now anyway. What color I got? Yeah, that'll be great. That'll be great. All right, nice. So that's it, the third one. I'm going to let this cool. And uh, again, you know. I can't heat my forge up to 3,000 degrees because I have my pressure on my regulator turned so so low that I know that it's not going to get hot enough to scorch my steel. I can crank this thing up and get it up to, you know, 1,900, 2,000 degrees, which is where you need to be for stainless steel, but I'm not doing stainless steel because I don't like stainless. I'd rather wipe my knife and warm my knife than, you know, an inferior steel. But hey, you can get a super magical stainless if you want. I'm not going to. So, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you back out when we get ready to quench. All right, so it cooled the black. It just took a minute or two. You can just look at it. Uh, right now, i got it back in the forge. We don't have to normalize anymore. We got our normalization process done. So now, what we're going to do is the heat treat process. So, um, I guess I'll leave the lights off because it's, maybe it's cooler. Did you see it come out of the forge? Uh, when it gets up to the non-magnetic, I know the temperature, but I'll pull it out of there so you can see about what it looks like when it's around non-magnetic, so you know. But I let, I let my steel soak for one minute. Now, if you've got a forge that you can't control the temperature on, don't leave it in the forge and let it go up there and get sky freaking high and burn your steel up, because then it's unusable. You know, there's hot spots in my forge, not a bad one, but I know where to put my blade inside my forge to keep my tip from getting too hot because if I put it right up under the flame, my tip and my edge is going to get too hot, it's going to scorch it. So I know where to lay it. You'll learn that from yours, and if you're using a torch, this is the color you're going to be looking for. So, here's the color that I like to get my 1084 too. So look, nice even orange. Look, that's non-magnetic. That's perfect. I'll put it back in here. I just want to show you that color. All right, so I'm gonna put it in there. I know it's in the temperature I want. I got a one minute timer set on my watch. I did have. You know, 1095, I used to do three minutes, but now I don't. I don't use 1095 anymore. Um, so I'm gonna let this sit one minute. I'm going to back the temperature down just a little bit. That's still not too hot. I mean, I could quench this now. 1084 doesn't need a long soak time. They say it doesn't even need soak at all. I like to soak it just to be on the safe side. Pull this back just a hair. Make sure that dip can even heat. Well, I mean, I know that's the right temperature. I can look at the color of that steel and tell. So I got 25 seconds left. Now, when we quench, you're going to see me. I'm going to take the blade, I'm going to plunge it straight down in the oil, and I'm going to go up and down. Five to eight seconds in that oil at least. Because if you pull it out and it flames back up, you're going to leave that shit in the oil long enough, and you're not going to have a hard blade. You get used to a heat treat procedure, your process. There we go, look at that. All right, so. Here we go. We're going to pull it out, straight down in the oil, wiggle it back up and down just to get the hot air pocket away from it, not side to side, you're going to warp the pits out of it. You're going to put it on that anvil and leave it alone. All right, there we go. Straight down. Look at that. Deep quench tank, going up and down, move that pocket. I'm going to make sure it's getting hard. Counting in my head. I use cooking oil. Vegetable oil, so it smells like French fries. I'll die on this stupid oil. It's cheap, you know. All right, so just play one. We took it out. We locked the carbon where it needed to. Right, I'm just shaking this off. Now, 1084. Let me put the lights here. All right. I know this 1084. When it gets that gray color, it's hard. I've used it enough to know that for my particular oil. That's hard. So I'm going to check it. I'm going to look. I'm going to turn this off. And I, I know it got hard. Well, now it's raining. I can hear it on the roof. I'm checking to see if it warped. I don't have any warped. It's straight as an arrow. If I did, this would be the time, you know, to try to take something and push on this blade to get it straight. So that's pretty much it. That's heat treat and quench. I'm going to lay this and leave it alone, waving it around while even warping in the cold air.